methane in En-ROADS. We can simulate the many ways that we can reduce methane emissions in three big sectors, energy, agriculture, and waste. Let's go check it out in the simulator. The best place to look to see methane emissions is under here, greenhouse gas emissions, methane emissions by source. It shows the three big sources stacked on top of each other. In blue, the energy production. This is from the leakage, from the extraction, delivery, and combustion, coal, oil, gas, and bioenergy. On top of it, from agriculture, cows, manure, rice in yellow. In brown, waste, that is wastewater, and landfill emissions of methane. We can change policies in the adoption of best practices that reduce many of those emissions. First, we'll look at agriculture here in yellow. So watch that yellow wedge change as we adopt best practices for reducing agricultural emissions of methane. If I make the change, and we watch it multiple times. We're simulating improved animal health, rotational grazing, manure management, digesters, composting, improved rice cultivations in, in different ways. We watch the yellow area shrink as methane emissions from agriculture go down. And then watching it go tracing through the system, greenhouse gas net emissions go down and overall temperature goes down. We can also change the overall production of crops and livestock. If we go in the advanced view down here and change food from animals, we'll reduce those emissions a little more and food waste as well would reduce emissions even more. Okay, let's look at the other sectors, energy and waste. We can change waste and leakage by boosting best practices in those areas. When we move the slider, watch the blue area and the brown area shrink. As we adopt those best practices, what's happening for leaks is uh, in the coal, oil, and gas industries for extraction, for delivery, combustion, detection, repair, upgrading of valves and new systems, methane recovery systems. In the waste area, primarily wastewater and landfills, this we are simulating here best practices like recycling, like composting, like reduced consumption overall, and methane capture at landfills. The brown wedge shrinks, the blue wedge shrinks, and overall emissions go down and temperature goes down. We also to, boot, to reduce those energy emissions more, can just have less production of coal, oil, and gas and bioenergy. When there's less coal, less oil, less gas, and less bioenergy, then there'd be less blue energy production methane emissions. So if we put it all together with the agricultural emissions and reducing, imagining some changes in food waste and in diets, then we can create scenarios that reduce emissions significantly. This concludes the basic introduction. Now I'm gonna give you some more advanced tips. And the key one is that in all three areas, there's a distinction between two approaches to reducing methane emissions. One approach is focusing on reducing the methane intensity of production. That is how much a methane gets emitted per unit of energy or waste or agriculture. The other though, is to produce less. If we produce less waste to wastewater and landfills, less coal, oil, and gas production and burning and less overall uh, agricultural production in crops and in livestock, we can reduce methane emissions as well. So think of that distinction and I'll guide you through some ways that you can see both of those factors and come up with actions that reduce both overall production 
and the methane intensity of that production. Let's go check it out. Let's look more closely and deeply into the area of energy production of emissions. There's a really interesting graph that shows overall methane emissions from energy, from coal, oil, gas, and bioenergy all stacked. So we can see where the methane emissions are coming from the, in the energy sector. And notice that this maximum around 140 in recent years, that 140 is the same as the blue area around 140 here. Okay, so this is the same, this area fits in that blue area. The way I want you to look at it is by looking at the difference between overall primary energy from fossil fuels and the methane intensity of primary energy. How many exajoules of coal, oil, and gas? And over on the right, how many kilotons of methane per exajoule of energy on the right? More energy, less intensity, multiply the two together roughly. It's more complicated than that, but to get overall emissions. So we can affect overall uh, emissions from energy in two ways. One is by changing the amount of methane leakage from the overall energy system. We are going to reduce it here, and that's going to affect the methane intensity. It doesn't change how much energy from fossil fuels, just the methane intensity from that sector, reducing it per unit production. The second approach is to have less production. So if we have less coal, less oil, less gas, more renewables, more energy efficiency, anything that leads you to burn less coal, oil, and gas, or and produce less coal, oil, and gas, even new zero carbon, these are things that reduce the overall primary energy from fossil fuels. So think of these two approaches. If you want the approaches to have results that are faster on overall emissions. There, one can change the years to achieve waste and leakage actions. Reduce that down, say, to 14 years, and things will fall a little faster in the intensity area. One can also change what year these policies start if you think it's going to take longer to implement some of these policies. Now let's look at agriculture. I'll undo everything, get us back to where we started. We're gonna look at the yellow wedge of overall agriculture emissions of methane. That lives in land, forestry, and food. The total agricultural production on the left and on the right is going to be the methane intensity of overall agricultural production. Again, overall production, crops and livestock disaggregated times the intensity of methane emissions from those two areas on the right. We can reduce the methane intensity on the through the lever here, and we can also reduce the uh, amount of food from animals or food waste, those two factors change the total production of agriculture. Two approaches to get us to reduce overall methane emissions. Of course, other factors such as population and the overall demand for food is going to affect that as well as economic growth affecting food choices. Okay, the third area is waste. And for waste, I'll pull up the, we're going to look at the brown wedge. And over on the right, we'll look at the methane intensity of waste. When we change this lever, it's changing both the overall uh, methane intensity. This is uh, reducing, uh, increasing methane capture. So less is also reducing overall consumption, material consumption, recycling, and composting on the uh, production side as well. One can experiment with putting all of these actions and policies together. I'll pull up 
the overall greenhouse gas and the, the overall methane emissions. And we can experiment with trying to meet the global methane pledge, which is a 30% reduction of methane emissions below 2020 levels by 2030. And that would mean that this blue line would go down to 250 by 2030. So right here at around 250 by 2030. When we put various policies together, that is best practices in agriculture, best practices in waste and leakage and energy, but also some changes to diet and to food waste and reducing coal, oil, and gas some. And then imagine as well, what if we were able to do these things not over 30 years, but over less time than that, and we're able to get these emissions very close to this goal of getting all the way down to 250 to meet the global methane pledge. Okay, methane and en roads, there it is. Three major areas, many different interventions that can bring those methane emissions down and contribute to a scenario that would keep warming to well below two degrees. Go get them.